Good afternoon, people. You are now tuned in to Urban Voices Radio. I am your host, Brad Harrison. I got my main man, Sean Merkin, in the building. What's up, Sean? What's going down? And my What's girl, T. Marie. She's back here somewhere. What's up? Everybody good? Look, people, we have a, a, a very special guest in the building for you today. We, well, we have a couple special guests. So we have the family of Brianna Taylor. We have the mom of Brianna Taylor, Mr. What's your last name? Palmer. Mr. Tamika Palmer. First, I want to thank you for coming out today. I know today, I know this is a trying time right now for you, and I appreciate you just coming in to speak with us, speak with us for a second. We also have the attorney for the family, Miss Lanita Bank. I always said, is, is it Lanita or Lonita? Lonita. So it's spelled with an O, but it's pronounced with a it's it's short, short O. Lanita Baker. Yeah. Well, we've been messing that up for the long <laughs> <laughs> The attorney for the family, Lanita Baker. We have a hero in the building. Mr. Kenneth Walker in the building, and we have Bianca Austin, hey. which is the aunt of Bianca Taylor. That's yeah. right. Okay. First, uh, Miss Palmer. Yes. I want to extend my condolences to you and your family. No parent should ever have to bury their child, especially under these horrific circumstances. On behalf of everyone up here at Par 106, and particularly Urban Voices Radio, we want to extend our deepest condolences to you. Thank you. Uh, just just today I want to start with how are you holding up? Barely. Barely? Barely. Is is Brianna, was she the only child? No, I have another daughter that's 20 years old. Okay. I, I know this is a rough time. Uh, how are you managing to, to keep yourself strong, keep yourself up during these times? Uh, work, really. I mean, I work a lot, trying not to think about it, but. When, when were you notified of the, well, I, I remember reading that you weren't notified exactly of where your daughter was until the following morning. So I believe this happened like a little after midnight and you were running around the hospitals to like 10 o'clock that morning and no one let you know where your daughter was at. Is that correct? Not exactly. I, um, when I got on the scene, they told me that I needed to go to the hospital. This was local police? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so I went to the hospital and I was there for about two hours. And um, before the lady said, ma'am, we, we don't have any recollection of this person being on the way. So uh, I go back to the scene, to Brianna's house. And um, we were there until about we were out there till about two o'clock that the next day, but it was about, it was so much happening in between that, but it was about 11 o'clock when uh, one of the de detectives said, um, he came over and said that they were about to wrap up and, and that they would be getting out of there. Um, and I asked, well, where's Brianna? Like, why won't nobody tell me where Brianna is? And, and that's when he said, well, ma'am, she's in her apartment. She was still in the apartment she's the following morning? morning. And this was approximately what time when you asked this? About 11. About 11 a.m.? Mm -hmm. So so the death occurred a little bit after midnight, and 11 a.m. the next morning she was still in the apartment? Yeah. So can I ask, how were you notified About initially initially of, of the shooting period? Kenny. Okay, so Kenny was able to give you a call that night? Absolutely. Okay, so you, you go to the hospital, you wait around, you go back to the scene. When you arrived on the scene, what was the atmosphere at the scene? Just police kind of hanging out they were just kind of hanging out so when we get there I you know I tell him who I was that I needed to get um, inside the apartment and so he told me um, to hang on that they would get a detective over there to talk to me so it took about two hours for him for the detective. to come and talk to you yeah so at, so at this point no one's giving you any information as far as what happened to your daughter no no one nothing so I don't know if I can speak to this. I, I'm hearing that when you arrived, a detective actually questioned you about Mr. Walker. Okay. Well, he uh, when he first asked me anything, he came over and asked me if I knew of anybody who would want to hurt Brianna or Kenny. So. So with that information, it, it sounds to me like there was an inference there. There was an inference there. Instead of just telling you flat out what happened. They're asking you, do you do you know if there was any problems between your daughter and, and Mr. Walker? Kind of implying that maybe this was something a, a crime that he may have committed. Is that, is that the thought you were getting? Uh, yeah, kind of. 
I did, or that somebody else may have done something. To, but but know? it was never relayed to you that law enforcement was yeah. involved in the shooting. Did they, did they even tell you the law enforcement um, fired shots? Um, no, actually, what he told me that um, the officer that an officer was shot and that you know uh, he was transported to the hospital. So I asked, well. Uh, why was the officer shot? I mean, what what's going on with that? And he said the officer was responding to uh, to something that had happened there. So in your mind, you're probably thinking this was a burglary or a call. The officer responded, and, and the officer shot. was shot in the process. Yes. So, so they never told you that they was actually going to her house or anything of that nature. No. All right. So from there, eleven or ten, eleven a.m., you find out she's in the apartment. Yeah. About what time was it? Did you did you remain at the apartment? Yeah, well, it was we left for a little bit because it was cold, so we kind of left and went and got coffee. That probably was about four in the morning. No, no, you're probably just hysterical at this point. Yeah, and um, so we left for a little bit, a little bit, and then we came back and we were just still standing out there waiting. And um, right before we left, uh, oh, that's it. I was gonna say is when they uh. Uh, said that they were there to serve a warrant and I said for who you know who are you looking for and uh for Brianna and he was like well ma'am he wasn't for sure I said well can I see the warrant and he said well we don't have it I'm not sure where it is I think it got lost in the, the shuffle and I was like well so no one actually see? showed you the actual warrant no okay so approximately what time do you think they brought Brianna's body out of the apartment? About one, about one thirty, about one one thirty in the oh, afternoon. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. And from there, were you ever given a chance to identify your daughter? No, I, I asked to identify her, and they told me um, no that they had identified her through paperwork. So I said, "Well, how do you know it's Brianna? Because there's a you know there's another woman that lives there." And he said, "Am I sure?" <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You know. Um, I knew that my daughter, what the other daughter wasn't there though, but I act, I said it because I'm thinking, how do you, I want to see that, I want to see my child. And so, um, he, they just told me that I wouldn't be able to identify her, that they had taken care of it, which pissed me off, but sorry. Yeah. I don't know so, that, okay, so you weren't able to identify your daughter. And from there, at what point did you find out that? LMPD officers may have been responsible for shooting their daughter. On the news. On the news. Yeah. This was the same day or the following the, day? That next, yeah, that morning. morning. Yeah. So when she says next morning, it's still that same. It's still the same day. day. It's still, 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 still the 13th. 12 12 12 12 12 12 in the morning right. versus. So we're still talking March 13th. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you hear on the news that LMPD, that, that officers may be involved in the shooting. Yeah, that, uh, they were there to serve a narcotics warrant, warrant and was met with gunfire and fired back. So and, when, and one suspect was yeah. dead and one was um, in custody. Yeah. So when you hear this, what's going through your mind? Uh, I'm pissed because, A, I, narcotics warrant for who? Because I, I absolutely know that Brianna don't got nothing to do with any narcotics, neither does Kenny for that matter, because I know who both of they, I, them are, and I know exactly what they do every day as far as going to work and, and what they, you know. So I don't understand how you were there to serve a narcotics warrant, and, and I'm pissed because I, I need to see this warrant. I need to know what's what's going on. Yeah. When, uh, did they ever show you the warrant at any no. time? They no. Still no. no. So to this day, so she you still haven't seen no, we've seen it now, but oh, they never showed so it. At, yeah. the time, at the time when it happened, they never showed out yeah. the warrant. We no. saw the warrant when the public saw the warrant, right. when it right. was released to the media. Right. right. Okay, so typically, typically in cases where there's a victim, especially a homicide victim, detectives usually keep in contact with the family to bring the family up to speed on potential suspects and what's going on with the case. Has LMPD kept you in the loop of this investigation at all? No, I haven't seen or spoken to LMPD not one time since this at day. all to this no. day to this day now like right now <sighs> that's wrong um, let me bring people up to speed that are that are watching on the live and if you're watching on the live can you please uh, share the video if you're watching uh, share the video one time 
Let me bring people up to speed for those that may be watching for the first time and don't know the background of this particular case. Uh, back on March 13th, I guess it's actually March 12th, LMPD. It was March 13th. It was the morning of. It happened at 12:30. They came well, to her house after midnight. On the 13th, right? Right. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm saying that they applied for these warrants on the 12th. On the 12th. Right. Okay. Yes. So going back to March 12th, well, going back, I guess, to January, LMPD had been investigating two suspects for possible drug trafficking in Louisville's West End. Your daughter, Brianna Taylor, lived in the South End off of St. Andrew's Church Road, correct? Right. So it's maybe 10 miles away. So back in January, LMPD officers began uh, doing surveillance on these two suspects in the West End. They put, I guess, apparently some cameras on some poles, by, some telephone poles by the home, and they did some surveillance following them around town. They claim on two occasions they followed these suspects to your daughter's home. And from what I read from the warrant, I didn't see any information linking Brianna to any drug trafficking, into assisting any drug trafficking. Just these two gentlemen came to her home. Uh, one of the particulars in the search warrant was- I don't even think it says two gentlemen. Just one? Just one. Okay, so one of the gentlemen came to her home. So one of the particulars in the search warrant is that on one occasion, I think they listed two, maybe three occasions, but on one of the occasions, they saw one of the gentlemen walk out of the home with what they call a postal package. One well, one, Yeah, one guy walked out with... No, one occasion. Oh, one occasion, he walked January out with... January 16th, it's one day. So. Okay, so on January 16th, he walks out with a package that they deem as a postal package. From their training, they assume that this package is indicative of drug trafficking and they claim that many drug suspects use different people around the city to send packages to. Now they made this claim without any evidence, without any information, without any substantial um, evidence at all supporting that claim. They just made the claim. So they also state that they spoke with um, the postal, postal inspector here in Louisville and the postal inspector deemed these package, packages to be indicative of drug trafficking. We later find out through a WDRB investigation that the postal inspector did not speak with LAPD officers. I believe the postal inspector spoke with officers from another agency and they inspected or they investigated these packages and deemed them not to be a drug trafficking operation. So we have a lie actually. And I, I wanna say that word emphatically because I don't, I don't wanna use a fallacy or a misstatement. They actually lied on a search warrant affidavit to obtain these no not warrants. Additionally, there was no information at all linking Breonna Taylor to, to any drug trafficking whatsoever. So these warrants were kind of uh, assumed under false pretenses. In the process of that, your daughter loses her life. A no knock warrant is issued on your daughter's apartment. They come in after midnight, uh, some shots were fired, your daughter is hitting the process. Eight times. Eight times. Now, this is when, I'm not going to ask about the case, but can I bring you up a little closer, Mr. Walker? Can I have you slide up to the, to the I'm not going to ask you anything about that particular night because I know there's, uh, I know the your case has been dropped. Going on with that your case night. has been dropped by the Commonwealth of Kentucky, but wh which one is it where it's dropped where they can pick it back up? With prejudice or it's without prejudice? dismissed without prejudice. It's dismissed without and, prejudice. And timeline emphatically said it could be represented to the grand jury at the conclusion of um, the investigation. So, you know, Kenny has been advised and is advised, you know, not to, not to not talk to speak about, about it. Tonight. Because we all know our rights and we, yeah. we know the first thing they say. Exactly. I, I just want to start, man, by saying, uh, man, you're a hero. You're a hero. And I don't know if anyone has said that to you. But I definitely want to say that to you, that you are a hero. From everything that I've read, you risked your life trying to protect your woman. And then on top of that, you endured incarceration for an attempted murder charge when you were just defending your home and your property. And I mean, many of us say what we will do in, in, in times like this, but you really don't know what you'll do until you're put in that situation. You were able to think enough to make a phone call to your mom, a phone call to Brianna's mom, and then a phone call to 911. Many people would have just frozen in that situation and not been able to react. And there would have possibly been two victims that night. 
but you were able to think, man. So I, I, I want to congratulate you, man. I want to salute you, and I want to let you know if no one has ever told you that yet, you are definitely a hero in my eyes. Uh, how you been holding up, brother? As much as I can. I, you, I know you. You, given that, how long were you incarcerated? For a couple weeks before they let you out on house arrest. So for two weeks, you were charged with attempted murder on a law enforcement officer. He was charged for over two months. He was yeah. in the jail for a couple of weeks. In jail for a couple and of weeks. And Judge Stevens let him out on home incarceration. So Judge Ulu Stevens let you out on home incarceration a couple of weeks after being incarcerated. Being incarcerated from the day of the situation, you didn't even get the degree properly. So being in jail, facing charges, how, how, how was your mindset? Were you able to still keep it together? What was going on in your head, man, with, with all this going on at one time? Hey, can somebody pull a mic like close to him? or? Yeah, that's, take your time, man. Take your time. We know you're going through a difficult moment. I felt like I did what I was supposed to do. Was it any sense of relief when Tom Wine announced that the charges were dismissed against you? Slightly, I guess, but that doesn't bring her back. Can you speak up a little bit, Nicker? I said slightly, but that doesn't bring her back. I understand. So the role we have here, we now have charges dismissed against you, can possibly be brought back up. We have a civil suit. We have a civil suit filed against LMPD. We have the attorney for the family, Miss Lenita Baker, in the building. Can you slide up, Lenita? Can someone better hand close to a mic? And I want you to give us a little information can you stretch that mic out a little bit where it's closer to you? Give us a little bit of information as far as where we stand with this civil suit and what is a civil suit alleging? Uh, the civil suit is for assault, battery, the wrongful death, and negligence of these officers. Um, we are still in the early stages of the civil suit, so um, there's a lot to be done. We're aggressively pursuing the civil case, but a lot, while we're aggressively pursuing our civil case, and digging, you know, just like the city's trying to figure out what I was going on. That's what we're doing too. So while we're doing interviews, doing media, we, we still got work to do on our end and that's what we're doing. Um, because we want answers. Tamika deserves answers. Kenneth deserves answers. But alongside us pushing for the civil suit, we're still pushing for criminal charges against the officers. We're still pushing for reform because to make a, what people don't understand is one, how strong she is and she has to go through this, but two, she is determined to ensure that Brianna's life is, uh, her death, her murder is not in vain, right? So whatever changes we can push for and legally, not policy changes, policy changes, I, I've said it a number of times, we can change the policy and say, no, not, you know, we're, we're going to suspend no knock warrants. But guess what? Next month, they could be reinstated, and we never know that they've been reinstated until the next person has been killed from a no knock warrant. So that's why I say it's important. Metro Council has before it, they will be voting Thursday on Brianna's Law, which significantly limits when police can even ask for no knock warrants. Everyone in the city needs to be calling their Metro Council person, Democrat and Republican, to say you need to vote for this legislation because there's no amount of drugs in the world that justifies taking a life. And it's not just civilians that are put in danger by no-knock warrants. Law enforcement officers are put in danger by no-knock warrants. So they have no business in police investigations. Secondly is we need no... Uh, 100% body cam, and not just that they're armed with body cameras, because what did we see Sunday? We have a bunch of officers with body cameras on, but nobody had them on. Right. So Brianna's law encompasses that as it relates to search warrants, but we also need to be pushing for 
body cameras whenever they're in, interacting with civilians, right? So we got to push for legal changes. Okay, so question. You've been attorney for a while on both sides. And for those that do not understand, what exactly is a no-knock warrant and what are the specifics around a no-knock warrant? So no-knock warrants give law enforcement officers the ability to come into your home without announcing themselves or without knocking. It's not just that they didn't knock, boom, 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 because, you know, we heard they knocked, but they didn't say who was at the door. Right. So as if someone's beating on your door in the middle of the night and they're not saying who it is, that's an issue, right? Because we know in Kentucky we have the castle doctrine, you're allowed to protect your home. So no-knock warrants give law enforcement officers the ability to come in without knocking or announcing. Um, they're only supposed to be issued in situations where there's a threat of destroying evidence or a threat that the officer could be injured. So another issue we have in this case is there was no even if you took everything in the affidavit for Brianna's apartment to be true, and even if you took it that, you know, the, the primary target of the investigation did have drugs in that box that he picked up. Again, we're not conceding that that's not what was in that box. Right. I, and, and looking through all the warrants, I don't even know that they witnessed them pick up a package. Right. But um, even if you took everything in that affidavit as true, it was not enough to justify a no-knock warrant on Brianna Taylor's apartment that night, that day, that night, whenever they were going to execute it. Because mind you, they got the warrant at 12.30 in the afternoon. They chose to wait another 12 hours to execute it so they could get overtime pay, basically. Right. Now, I do want to clear a couple things up. Initially, it was reported that uh, there were five no-knock warrants issued that day for these two, For these, I think it was two gentlemen, correct? Uh, there was about five people listed. There's only two other people listed on the warrant for Brianna's apartment, but in the full in that full narcotics investigation, there were four or five people listed on that. Okay, so there were five no knock warrants issued. Uh, that's not a typical in, in Kentucky. Well, in the city of Louisville, I think it averages between eleven and twenty three no knock search warrants in any particular year. So to have five in one day is substantial. Uh, also, I want to point out that what we, we heard Conrad testify that only six was issued in Kentucky this year. To date. To, to that date. Right. So five was issued at that, that So yes. five were issued for one investigation. So that, okay, so, and I also want to let people know that when the search warrant was executed on Breonna Taylor's home after midnight, initially it was thought that the two suspects were picked up, or one of the suspects was picked up early in that day. But we're finding out now that he wasn't picked up to around what 10 or 11 p.m. or something like that. It was late. It was just, it was before the warrant was executed on Brianna's home. I'm I'm not gonna say 10, 11. It could have been 11:30. Right. But it was before they knew he was in custody when they went to Brianna's. So home. the suspect was already in custody. According to the search warrant, they were going to Brianna's house to search for possible drugs or cash. So that definitely does substantiate a uh, no-knock search warrant. Uh, throughout your investigations, because I've been hearing certain things on the street, I don't want to put anything out there that's false or not, but are there any possible motives as to why these officers may have targeted Brianna's home? Basically trying to... They were using her as a pawn to get the primary target. I, I want to say that. Let me tell you what I've heard. And this is not from anyone on your team. This is what I've heard. I've heard that there was kind of this cat and mouse game going on with one of the suspects that they had targeted. His house was searched a couple of days before this happened. Nothing was at his house. And he put up a Facebook post saying, they came in again, found nothing. Ha ha. Right. So, he, so he was taunting them on social media. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is that he taunted them, and then eventually these officers took it personal and decided to go to Brianna's home to basically show him, like, look, if you keep messing with us, we'll mess with everybody that we think you're attached to. And if that took place, that's that's extreme corruption. 
I mean, that's extreme. It's egregiously targeting someone for your own personal needs, not for justice. Justice, correct. So, where do we go from here? This how keep the, the, pushing. We the the we got our, our foots are on their throat right now. Keep it there. So, for people that are wondering, typical uh, civil suits stretch out what possibly a couple years. Yes. So stretch out a couple years. Uh, Here's what I want to say though: not the, the attorneys. We got them on the civil suit. We got them on the civil suit. You got them. You're confident. What you we need them. the the the, the public to do is keep their foot on their throat. We need police reform. We need these officers charged. We need to make sure that in 2012, well, November 2, well, actually June 23rd, we, we need to make sure we had all of, every time there is an election, we need to be there voting. And I know some people are like, I vote and don't do nothing. Guess what? We vote for our judges. If you're flipping over a ballot and we got judges on that uh, ballot and you don't know those names, you part of the problem. And, and that's it. So I'm saying let's fix it from here on out, right? And let's be clear that why judges are important because in this particular case, we have Judge Olu Stevens that was presiding over Kenneth Walker's case. And I guess from the evidence, he looked at the case and decided that there was a, this is what, a half a million dollars bail on that case? I think 250000 250, 250000 so a quarter million dollar bail on that case. Judge Stevens looked at the information in the case and released him on home incarceration, which didn't make the FOP very happy. Correct. You know, the other people we elect, though, the prosecutors. We do. And we know that if we're in Jefferson County, you can almost bank on whoever comes out of that Democratic primary is going to serve, is going to be elected in November in the general election. So next time we have the prosecutor on the ballot, you need to be out. You need to know who those candidates are. You need to know what they stand for. And lawyers, I'm great. Call y'all out too. And I'm one. We got to start putting ourselves on these ballots. We can't keep telling people you got to vote. You got to vote. Here are the judges. Here are these lawyers. We got to step up to the plate and we got to run for these positions too. I'm not saying that I'm running for anything. I'm calling out the lawyers out there. I'm calling the other lawyers out there. Well, after this, you might as well put your name on the ballot. Right. Exactly. While we're at it. Signed off. Has she been called to the department? Signed off. You know what? There's only so much, like, I know people are like, oh, she should resign. Oh, uh, penalties could be. She took what the officer told her at face right. value. Right. And it's Here's typical, what right? I, Yeah, and that's typical. And what, I, and, and what I hope this does and what other judges see and what I hope that she sees is this. I hope these actions and what happened, unfortunately, to Brianna, to make sure that it doesn't happen to anyone else, you got to start asking questions. If officers are, search, are, are, are seeking out specific judges to sign off on warrants, you got to ask, why do they always come to me to get this signed? Right? You got to start asking these. You got to start asking questions like, well, these allegations are two months old. Why am I, Why is there urgency of a search warrant right now? Because mind you, search warrants are like that. Why is there urgency in me signing this? Why do I need to sign a no-knock warrant? So we need our judges to start asking those questions. And at the end of the day, come 2022, y'all know who that judge is. Y'all remember that name. If, if someone by chance, if, if there's an opponent on there or if she runs for re-election, y'all got to remember that as voters. You got to remember it as voters. You can't forget. You can't think in 2022. You can't let 2020 be forgotten when 2022, because guess what? In 2022, we'll be voting for 43 judges in Jefferson County. All four 43, all, we have 43 judicial seats. And that goes from the Kentucky Supreme Court all the way down to district court. All 43 are up for re-election in 2022. Okay. And that is very important because in the Breonna Taylor case, we also have some stale evidence. Because like as you report, the last date that I saw on that search warrant was January 16th. This warrant wasn't filed for until March the 12th, which is two months later. So at that given time, what if the act, what if she didn't even live there anymore? You know what I mean? They went to someone else's home. So these judges are issuing warrants just, well, in our system, the officer's word holds that much weight that they can present evidence to a judge to get a warrant. And it's basically just, okay, these officers are credible. And that's why and, body and counters are important too. And that's why right. we got it. We almost have to make it a crime for an officer to not have 
their body camera on. Also, you know, saying to look deeper into it, how many uh, how many other investigations have they messed up prior to this one? Right, right. So, again, I'm gonna pick your legal brain for a minute, and I know this is not your field now, but are you? Many people are asking me why these officers aren't charged, and from what I gather. I think it's correct if I look at 67 C. It's KRS that's 67 C. That's why they ain't terminated. That ain't not, that's not why they ain't fired. I mean, why they ain't charged. That's, why they're not that's what the mayor keeps saying because that's why they're not fired. Okay, so in Kentucky, 60, KRS 67 C says that officers cannot be fired while a pending, while the investigation is pending, correct? Mm -hmm. And if they are fired, they can, I guess, raise an appeal and be reinstated and given some back pay. 67C doesn't necessarily say that because I read 67C and I, and so again, like you said, this is, so I'm looking through it. I'm like, well, I don't see that in 67C. So there's a combination of stuff. And that's the stuff that I'm still, you know, like I said, in the background, we're working. So it's 67C combined with the collective bargaining agreement that we're under. From FOP? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a lot of things that are working together. So it's those things that we need to know too, right? So it's my understanding that that contract's being negotiated. So we need to be, so Maya, not only do we, are we charging you to fire these officers now, like some of these sections that are in this collective bargaining agreement need to go. All right, so, so, so to bring people, so speaking layman terms, basically the police union has policies set in place or laws set in place that protect these officers. A contract. A Basically, contract. A contract with the city. We provide these services. These are the protections we get. And one of those protections are the all these due process rights that we keep hearing. Before an officer is terminated, they have to go through all these different due processes. Now, I'm going to ask you. Technically, can a mayor, can the mayor just fire these officers? Technically. You can. I mean, and, and that's what... And, I know you you on my page, so right. so what I put is I understand that the legal counsel has advised him you can't do that or you know this is you can always do something right. you know do, might you have to have some additional consequences yeah but you gotta weigh right you gotta exactly. weigh these and I'm like even if, if you fire them and and say they appeal and they get hired back guess what you at least shown us something by taking the step to far that you are on the side of the people yeah yeah, yeah. That's exactly fight that battle of too. appealing we were yeah. saying the same thing too up here that you know what i'm saying he needs to make he needs to take a step to do yeah. something to ensure and i saw him doing a press conference last week and during the press conference he was saying that if, if the officers were fired the appeal can be the appeal process can happen they can be reinstating and giving back pay and some additional monies or whatever right so i'm saying to myself Okay, I get that, right? But if you if your thing is if your if your argument is saving money, right now you're paying a lot of overtime dollars for all these protests, all these marches. You're paying officers plenty of overtime. City workers are getting uh, money to clean up. Sanitation workers are getting. Everybody's working overtime, so you're probably spending more money doing that than you would if you had to reinstate these officers. And also, you know, speaking of that, you know, the, you know, the protest probably would have been a whole lot different had he took the necessary steps to charge the officers. Yeah, because people, look, I was well, out the there mayor like, can't charge, but he can I mean, but that part, that part, that part, yeah. Tom yeah. Wine has to bring charges up, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, now yeah. it's Daniel Cameron. Right, right. 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 Yeah. Did y'all read that article yesterday? I haven't read it yet. I saw his interview. You saw his interview. I'm gonna let you talk about and what, it. How do you feel, T? Yeah. Um, I feel like right now he's trying to play the fence, and I, I feel like in the position that he's in, he's playing it safe. And this is when Daniel Cameron is our new Attorney General, correct? Yes. Newly elected, he's been in what maybe three or four months. Since like that time for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He he was installed in December. So he's actually a Black Attorney General, but he is a Republican mm -hmm. under Mitch McConnell, correct? Mm -hmm. That doesn't give me. Much <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't give me much faith there, but but go ahead, T. No, I'm just. I mean, I, I don't, he said, you know, he's got the case. He's looking at it. He wants it to be done as soon as possible. Um, I'm kind of like you. But he said, this is what this is what stuck with me. <laughs> Cameron said he has not personally experienced the kind of racism that demonstrators are marching against. What? I'll let y'all take that. Well, we, 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 we uh, enough way. of that. We, 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 no. Hold on. No, I'll no, let no, take no, that. no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no. So Cameron is a black male, and he's saying he hasn't experienced the type of racism that protesters have experienced. Yeah. He's also for the city of Louisville, correct? 
I want to say he's he went to University of Louisville, but I think he's from Elizabeth Town, like Horton okay. County area. Okay, so he's close. So he's that 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 that's a red flag for me. That's a red flag for me. If you're a black male in America, if you've experienced racism to some extent, period. On several occasions. You're saying now that you have experienced the race the racism that protesters experience. A lot of them are white. <laughs> so, I mean, so I mean, if you have any experience as much as a white no, person, they're protesting against. Oh, the type the, of, yeah, the, the reasons. Yeah. Okay. And sure. look, <laughs> right. I, look, I don't, I don't see these protests dying down anytime soon. I was out last night. I actually participated in one of the marches, and we actually marched. I didn't even know we were going to end up in Mayor Fisher's home, but we ended up in front of Mayor Fisher's. <laughs> you said you could walk up there. I should have done a barbecue. I didn't know. I didn't know where we were going. Right? So we, we marched down Speed Street. We're in front of Mayor. Fr and and I'll, let me say this. Let me say this. Over the past seven days, last night was the first night I was out, and I can tell the difference in police behavior. Uh, under Conrad, there was a more aggressive style of policing throughout these uh, these protests. They were firing the, the rubber bullets, they were firing the pepper balls, and they were being aggressive. Last night, police were extremely polite. I, I'm seeing a walk with. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. when we did yeah. the um, men's march today, they was out there walking with us. So, you know, you definitely, it's a different tone. They were out last night, and they, they let protesters pretty, and, and I noticed this, that the police aren't as gr aggressive anymore since Conrad, the chief of police Conrad has been fired. We have a new, I guess, interim chief now. Yeah. I don't know who's, is it a female? Schroeder, or no? Schroeder, Schroeder. 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 It's a okay. So we have a new chief, but the police don't appear to be as aggressive on the streets. And in turn, the protesters don't seem to be as aggressive. I mean, but we also got to commend Mr. Mika and the family for, you know what I'm saying, saying nonviolent protest because at any time she could have been like, let's tear this city up Man. for yeah. her daughter. So, yeah. you know, we, we definitely got to commend and they her for don't that. Like, and, and none of these people, and that's the that's the beautiful beautiful thing about what I do yeah. is I get to I get to really okay. learn about these Trust people. me, we, we, we I feel in the love today. because I mean, at any time, you know, <laughs> she could have lost in the life. She, uh, <laughs> she, she doesn't want balance tied to Brianna's name. Right. right, right. Brianna wasn't a valid person. Right. Brianna wanted to help people, and so that you know, it, it's hers. Really, is about Brianna's legacy and what what Brianna wants done. Speaking right. of speaking of which, Wave Three kind of touched on some some misinformation Ooh, about yeah, Brianna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah so so if y'all can, if y'all may, which I, which I'll speak on the character of Brianna and who she was as a person. Just say, you don't gotta you don't gotta respond to the article. Yeah, please. Just don't, tell you don't gotta them respond. About, just tell, just tell, us, tell them about. Tell us Bruce about Rihanna, please. <laughs> yeah. That was she as as, as a person. <laughs> Take a break. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get you Y'all saw her blood. Yeah, y'all seen right? that. I mean, <laughs> um, well, I'll say it. Let me preface it. I'll say it because there was an article put out there to me that was put out purposely to defame the character her, of yeah. Rihanna Taylor, and the like article you. stated that say she her, was her, not an EMT, and. I, I've read up on a lot of this, and an EMT here in, in, in Kentucky is actually like a certification. So she was a certified EMT, which that doesn't that doesn't dissipate once you leave the position. So she's still a certified EMT, but she left working for the city of Louisville and was currently working for University of Louisville Hospital at the time of her death. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So speak to the character of your daughter. Let us know who Brianna was as a person. Uh. Brianna was, she was just full of life. Brianna uh, would help anybody. She always was helping people. She always was just, Brianna was about making her money, looking good, and, and helping people. And that's just it. All she cared about was being great. And, and she wanted everybody around her to be great. Brianna would have a whole plan for your life. Like, yes. no, I need you to be doing X, Y, and Z, because then by then we can make this amount of money by, I'm like, girl. But she... Yeah. The way that they made her seem was yeah. not correct at all. So, yeah, Brianna was great. That, I mean, and that's just the, the simple way to put it, because, yeah. Oh, I do she have another. definitely was a queen. I have another, I have another uh, this way a little bit. I have another, uh, something else I want to clear up. Initially, initially, you know, people, people run with rumors and people run with, with, uh, 
I don't know. People people give their own scenarios to stories when they don't know what's really taking place. So initially, there were uh, when the when the two suspects that were under the narcotics investigation when their names were released, one of the last names happened to be Walker. So people no assumed relation. that no, this person was all, kin to uh, to Kenneth Walker. And as far as I know, that there's no kin, no relation. You don't even it's know not these as people. As far as you know, it's, right. it's no relation. Okay. There is no relation <laughs> to the suspects. Cause I, I, I found that flying around, and people were, you know, people were kind of giving the, giving life to to something that was false. So I want to kind of get that clear that Kenneth Walker is not related to the Walker that is under the narcotics investigation. I don't even think you know these people, do you? They tried it. All right. They tried to put it out there. <laughs> so question for, for mom: How does it? How are, how are you handling like just the national spotlight? Like, is, is people constantly trying to get in touch with you all? Like, I know I read, you know, Kanye West was was donating to the to the attorneys, um, and like, how to even Ben Crump get on board? Ms. Baker, you can, yeah, did check in? No. So let me clarify a little bit about because you know we said we have a civil case. So there's a lot of costs that go into pursuing a civil case, right? right? No, we have not gotten a check. No, it is not. Lanita Baker is still the same Lanita Baker she was <laughs> last week before right. TMZ broke that TM that we was getting legal. So costs. What happens in a civil lawsuit is at the end of the lawsuit, if there's a recovery, what would have gone to the family gets deducted by the cost. So experts, you know, just dig in private investigators, whatever we may need to do. What, and we haven't solidified anything at this point, but what Kanye's people told me, because I ain't talked to Kanye, so I'm going to put that out there, too. I ain't talked to Kanye. So they want to make sure that at the end of the litigation, that whatever, if they recover, doesn't come back to them. Also want to make sure that in the event that for some reason there's not a recovery, that we are still, like, they want to make sure we're able to aggressively pursue this case. Correct. Because there's no Not guarantee. Not we wouldn't have done that anyway. See, I'm mad you are myself. We would have, and Ben, we would have been doing that anyway. Uh, but they, but like we said, when it, it, when you do it, it comes back out of any recovery. He didn't want that coming from the family. Okay. So there's been no money exchanged at this point. So don't be a hut in box either. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I just, I'm just seeing all these. Yeah. Like I now, Ben, I, I was going to say, they asked about Ben Crump. I'm a vice president of the National Bar Association. Benjamin Crump's a past president. I've known Ben Crump for almost 10 years. We're very good friends. We've been on this case since four days after Brianna was killed. So this ain't something we didn't just get on this case. Sam and I have been on this case. We needed people to pay attention to this case. Yeah. And who can make people pay attention to this black, case? Uh, black media, Urban Voices Radio. <laughs> 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 well, just know that are saying uh, we also they got some individuals. All day. We also got some individuals that's in the building. I know. I mean, I know we're still doing this interview, but they want to meet y'all too. Okay. So it's okay if I bring them in. Well, no, I, I, like Bianca, she speaks out a lot too. So she you does. was asking about so Bianca. You the one that's Auntie, like, go in there oh. too. Go in there. Yeah. And, and you know, I'll be trying to. You know, she be over her side at me. So I be so trying to like, like, <laughs> pull, 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 like, pull up a little bit. Like just chill. Pull up a little bit. No, but like, like for it's been a long, rough three months, three and a half months. So, um, and we still got a long road ahead. So, uh, we just thankful. Number one, we just want to thank the city for coming out and showing out, you know, for Brianna because uh, she loved it here. She absolutely loved Louisville. She thought she was a, a genius here. You know, she like you know she. She that was, goes to our school system. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, JCPS School Board, Kentucky Board of Education. Brianna came from Michigan and said she was, she a, was genius. a genius. So let's that, 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 get that. <laughs> oh, and, and for the reason we're here, there is a balloon release so today, today, right? Yeah, so today, uh, we, we're going to be downtown 5 o'clock uh, just to celebrate and reflect on uh, Brianna um, and just get, get a message across. So everybody's welcome. 
Um, I know it's a lot, it's a lot going on. I know it's several marches, excuse me, I don't know the organizers and some of the organizations that's doing it, but it's all love and it's all appreciated and it's all welcome. And we want you all to come in peace. Um, this is not gonna be a protest today. This is gonna be a celebration. And everybody is welcome. Um, uh, so, um, and just that being said. The, the location again summary. is? Oh, it's going to be on 6th and Jefferson. In front of the, in front of the Hall of Justice? At 5 o'clock. So we're going to do a special balloon release. And then um, um, got a special butterfly release going to go down. So. Okay. People are encouraged to bring out what color balloons? Blue, silver, white, and cream. It's, it's the thing we're going for. So blue, silver, white, and cream balloons today, 5 p.m.? Today, 5 p.m. 5 p.m., 6th and Jefferson. 6th and Jefferson. Louisville, Kentucky. Bring out your blue, white, Silver, Silver and cream, and cream yes. balloons. And then afterwards, um, No Hairs MC, um, they're going to host a block party, barbecue. So we have, they have food. We're going to have plenty of food. So we're going to have plenty of food. Papa John, shout out to Papa John's and everybody who donated. Uh, delicious and China, they and uh, Too Shy. Shout out to those ladies for really working hard, getting everything together for us. Like we now, the location really of No Hairs? Uh, it's um, 1120 South 36th Street. You, you ain't gonna be able to miss it. So, um, this is right, right off 36th and Hill, right across from Kid Wells Detail yeah, Shop. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right there. Yep. Right there. So. All right. So at this moment, we have some special guests in the building. We have Louisville's own Lincoln Bridge that wanted to stop by and, and meet the family of Brianna Taylor. So we have Lincoln Bridge in the building. What's going on, people? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> we good, man. We good, man. Look, we've been trying to get you guys up here for a moment. I'm glad that we got you up here. <laughs> How y'all doing, brother? Um, we're doing we're doing pretty good. It's Big Ron here from Montreal Davis. What's happening, y'all? Who's the guy in the back? That's Mario, Pastor Mario. That's my brother. I'm the one he ain't no guy. The Mario. <laughs> yeah, hey, Mario, you look different coming yeah. in the door. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> he, he, he is Mario Mark back there. <laughs> so you guys are coming in with what a signed CD for? For, uh, yeah, for Mario. absolutely. That's good. That's, That's great. Dope. And look, let me let me let me say this, uh, Miss Palmer. I always say that in in the face of tragedy, there's always a silver lining. And one of the silver lines I've seen throughout the city of Louisville is that it's tragic that you lost a daughter, and it's tragic that you lost your woman. In that, I've never seen the city of Louisville express this type of love. I haven't seen the world because this has now become a worldwide case. And for the first time ever, the world is concerned about police brutality. So we have we have legislation trying to be passed across the nation that's targeting uh you know police brutality. We have the issue of racism being confronted in America. We have this we have the judicial system, which is unfair to black people being under examination in this country. We also have black female victims being under examination because often when there's a male victim it gets a lot of of press and black female victims don't often get that press so it's a tragic tragic situation that we lost brianna but to see so many positive things come out of her death that there there are several blessings in this i know nothing can bring back your daughter but in the name of your daughter in the name of your woman Right now, the world is changing. The world is changing based on this one particular situation. So if that helps you go further, I hope it does. And, and again, I know it doesn't bring back your child, but she's leaving a legacy behind. And just what she was just, she, her birthday was last night. She would have been 27 years old. Appreciate you, man. So um, at 27 years old, She's leaving a legacy that is going to change the world, change the way that that I'm dealt with as a black male, that you're dealt with as a black female, and our kids and our grandkids will be dealt with going further. So behind the tears, because I've shed tears myself, you know, because I have a girl. So, you know, behind the tears, it also it makes me proud to know that things are changing. That's the, that's the last night. I've never felt that type of feeling as I did last night. We were participating in that March. And I mean, there were black people, white people, Asian people, 
Hispanic people, gay people, everyone was out and the and the vibe was all love. And I mean, people were out with 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 I'm an older guy, I'm 47 years old. So I walk, I look, I got home and I looked and I had to do the map quest. Because I said, man, we walk a long way. We walk 6.2 miles to Mary Fisher's house and I walk back. I said, man, I walk 13 miles. And one night, almost 50 years old, I couldn't walk up my steps last night. <laughs> but you know what? I got up this morning. I thought about your daughter. I got up this morning. We had another men's march, a black men's march at 11 a.m. And I got up and I said, man, I'm tired. But you know what? She put her life on the line for us. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go do this march. And that's the kind of spirit that your daughter has brought yeah. to Louisville, Kentucky. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let So, so, so I'm friends now with Evander Holyfield. Okay. Not because of what we've done, but uh, Evander Holyfield, I was looking on his page uh, yesterday, and they did a march in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and he was out there with the people. And it was just head signs out, justice for Brianna. So I, you know, I thought that was pretty touching. So I it, talked it to is. him, him uh, and his manager this morning, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll be willing to come to Louisville. That's a good thing, man, because they've been here a few times. So that, that's the, the impact, you know, the situation. You know, everybody hates hates what happened, but it's it's touching to see black people coming together and not fighting, not arguing amongst each other. And you know that is a legacy, you know. And I'm and I'm fighting back the tears because I hate seeing um, seeing this kind of thing go on because it's it's ongoing. Right. You know, we you know some people thought it was was over with back in the in the '70s when when that, when everything was going on, but it, it continued. The racism continues to go on, and the world needs to to pay attention to what's going on because there has to be a change. You know, Sam Cooke wrote the song, A Change Is Gonna Come, because he saw the uh, the injustice, but it's it still hasn't came forth full, full, full fledged. And it needs to, people need to realize that, we, you know, we're all, we're all people. We're all the same. Everybody cries, everybody has pain, everybody has a life and everybody matters. Black, black lives matter, white lives matter, Mexican. Everybody in the world's life matters, and I think that uh, that this is drawing people closer to God too. I mean, everything that's going on in the world, the coronavirus and all of that, yeah. and then but then when you see this kind of thing, somebody, a cop having his knee in a, a black man's face, or, or any man, period, it, it, it just and and this man just died on the ground, right there on 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 the camera. Yeah. So I'm like, man, it, it's ridiculous. And so there needs to be like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to say, there needs, they need to screen people when they get them to the police force. First Constantly. Time. Because <laughs> yeah. there are good cops out there. Mm -hmm. I've met them. Some of them are my friends. But the bad cops are making a bad name for the good cops. And so people are not, they don't trust the police. Yeah, anymore all. and they're afraid you're afraid to get pulled over because you don't know what's going to happen you want to film yourself when you get pulled over but we we just we wrote a song called no hate so uh and the song is basically talking about racism but it's talking about treating everybody the same and you know one of the lyrics that big rome had uh we, we had wrote and he said uh, maybe you were taught this way, meaning you got parents that taught their children racism. So you got kids, you could have two kids and raise them together, black, white, any other race, and they won't see the difference in their color, but then they're taught to hate each other. And, and that, that's gotta, that's gotta end, it's gotta stop. Yeah. But then um, I just, it, 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 it hurts to lose somebody, but it, it hurts more to lose somebody in this way. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I couldn't imagine, you know, I got one daughter, and I couldn't imagine losing my daughter, yeah. especially to something like that. Tell the city up. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and something else, man, like when, when you're saying right. this, this has brought a lot of people together and a lot of people closer to God. And uh, something else, man, that I'm not originally from Louisville. I've been here since 96, so I've been here 25. Right. You're from Louisville. 
<laughs> been here 25, 26 years, right? But no, this is something, look, this is something lived in a few different places. And West Coast, Indianapolis, a few places. And this is one thing I can say about being here. For some odd reason, people from this city changed the world. Muhammad Ali changed the world. Breonna Taylor changed the world. Lincoln Bridge changed the world. Derek Anderson changed the world. Static Major changed the world. Something about people from Louisville, Kentucky that leave a mark on this world. I don't know what it is, but it's all about the people from here. We the greatest. We the greatest. Well, you know we just got some of the best water in the country. I'll vouch for that. (laughs) Yeah, man. And and, and when you speak of God, man, it's it's one of those things, too, because, you know, you have the little chatter here and there. So I'm on social media a lot, and I see people say, hey, where's the pastors at, right? So I find myself now speaking up for the pastors. I'm like, look, I'm out here every day, and I see them. Yes, and, and for the first time, I'm not saying for the first time, usually pastors are at the forefront of whatever they're doing. But in this particular movement, I've seen pastors take the back seat and stand side by side with someone like me. And they're not seeking the spotlight because it's not about them. So I just want people to know that even if you don't see a pastor in the spotlight, it doesn't mean they're not there because they're out there. And we have Mario Martin, who actually is a pastor. In yeah. a building with us today, so Mario. Yeah, I, um, I mean that's that's one that's one thing. And thank you. Step, up, step up to the mic, yeah. sir. <laughs> you know you used to the thank, y'all, y'all, thank y'all for letting me actually be here today. I wanted to come out and hanging out with my brother, and I wanted to come and get an opportunity to meet the family. Um, and I'll be with y'all today. I'm, uh, they asked me to close out the prayer today, um, so I'm happy to do all that. I wanted to come to meet y'all today. Since you hit that subject, um, it's it's powerful because all this week. I've been protesting and standing next to preachers and pastors all over this city. A good friend of mine, Pastor Tim, who um, he just texted me a message to give to y'all too, and I'm going to share that with you in a second. Um, but he was almost arrested on Shelby Road because we shut down Shelby Road Monday. They grabbed him, threw him in the car, figured out who he was, and let him go. But, um, we, you know, but pastors, we're out there. You know, we are out there, and the, what I love about it is, we're not making it about us. So some people are saying, you know, where the preachers, where the pastors, where clergy. We we are here working. Some of us been out here, and all we need is news or something like this. And look, you know, Rihanna, we need justice for her. And listen, I want y'all to know that we gonna get it. We gonna get it. Period. Point blank. We gonna get it, and we ain't gonna quit till we do. This is just just real talk. Um, but like I said, um, pastors are out there, and we thinking about this family. We praying for this family. We are praying for this city and we're praying for this nation but we're praying for a change and we're expecting a change well can you go on um, some prayer i, I sure will take. can i before i do that can i just can i share this message pastor Please, tim finley kingdom fellowship church um he texted me just a second ago i don't know if he knew i was up here or the lord told him or what or maybe he's watching you watching i don't know but, my pastor. Or, you know whatever <laughs> but uh he texted he said i would love the opportunity he said if you're if the family is oh he is watching he just said i'm watching <laughs> Uh, he said, if the family is ever open, open, um, he's ded- he's willing to dedicate his entire Sunday morning live service to a conversation with you um, because it's such an important message. So he's talking about trying to share, you know, ch- share it with, you know, with the world, share this message. And a lot of preachers ain't going to shut down a whole service, you know what I mean? A whole service, we got to get the, you know, we got to get our word in. Um, and uh, he also, also told me that he's going to be with me today. Um, when we come down there at five o'clock, so hopefully we can all link or we can make that connection. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, he's willing to do that. And um, I can tell you what she gonna tell him to get with me. And it's not, no, it's not, not a legal thing. Right. It's, I don't know if people realize how many people are just, and it's overwhelming to a point. So she sends them to me. Yeah, I, mean, I, which, I know. I know. Yeah, which how when we make a shake? I'm that's sure, what I was trying to ask you. Earlier. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's like the garage. Oh it's not. And again, we thank you for yeah. for coming up here and allowing us to get this exclusive. Right, thank you guys for having well, me. Let me share with people. It's, it's, it's about it's about getting this message. Speak up to the microphone. I said I thank you guys for having us and just for the support. Period. So I'm grateful. All right, so we have to get out of here. Time is up. But while we get out of here, can you end us in prayer, Mario? I sure can. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you've given to us, all that you've kept us from. Oh, God, the dangers that we've 
that we've seen and then the stuff that we didn't even know that was about to happen that you blocked for us. Oh God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to still be here, to fight for those who can no longer fight, to speak up for those who can't speak up. Oh God, we thank you for all that you're going to do and how you're going to bring justice to this situation. Oh God, we thank you for how you're going to keep this family, how you're going to continue to minister to them and lift them up in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for this show, oh God, who is speaking out and bringing attention to matters that are necessary. And we thank you, we thank you overall, oh God, for the victory that we haven't seen, but we believe is coming. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, people, check us out every Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m., Urban Voices Radio on Power 106 FM. You can also catch it online at kyheartmedia.com. Again, that's kyheartmedia.com. Uh, Pastor Finley, you know you could have just popped up and came up here, man. <laughs> if you were watching on the live, you could have just came up.